Hey boys, it's Arm None. Today, we're going to be going over the top 10 most armored vehicles in Grand Theft Auto Online in 2023. Now, quick spoiler, there are actually going to be more than 10 vehicles on this list because we do have some bonus vehicles that I'm going to include. So anyway, guys, let's go ahead and get started with number 10, which is actually number 14. Starting off with number 14, an honorable mention is the Armored Karuma. This thing goes for $525,000 up to $700,000 depending on if you have completed the Fleece job or not. The Armored Karuma is a car that is nearly 100% bulletproof in GTA. Uh, the windows are very hard to pen and uh, it's very hard to hit the occupants of this vehicle. I know for a long time there was a way to get this thing into the Pacific Standard Heist. I'm not sure if that still works or not, but it was very, very useful. Uh, basically, everybody got into the car and you didn't get shot by the cops at all. I've heard that this car is about 95% bulletproof, that's what people sort of say, and I absolutely believe it. Now unfortunately it has no explosive resistance, which is why it is an honorable mention on this list, because it really doesn't have any armor, it's just bullet resistant. Still a useful car to have nonetheless. Let's move on to the next honorable mention. Next up of course we have the Imponte Duke of Death. Now this thing can take two explosives. Um, the first one, it will survive. The second one, it will die. It doesn't have the bullet resistance of the armored Karuma, but like I said, this list is the top 10 most armored vehicles in Grand Theft Auto Online, so this thing is automatically going to be placed ahead of the armored Karuma. This thing is pretty bulletproof from behind, and even from the sides, it is relatively well armored. You are still going to be able to get shot through this thing, but because of the explosive resistance, I had to place it a little bit higher than the Karuma. I think for bullet resistance, the Karuma still has this thing beat, and also for performance overall. The Karuma is all-wheel drive, and this thing is a rear-wheel drive muscle car, so it's really not exactly the best performing vehicle ever. Still, a good one to have though. And of course, this thing is actually free, so if you guys are interested, make sure you pick one of these up off of Warstock. And for our next honorable mention, we have the Anis 300R that was added with the Los Santos Drug Wars DLC. Now this thing has since been removed from the game to be drip fed to us at a later date. So maybe by the time you're watching this, it will be out. It goes for about $2.1 million. This is an Imani tech capable vehicle, meaning that it has a missile lock on jammer. And as you guys can see, it also has armor on the sides of it. However, this vehicle is a little bit weird compared to some of the other Imani tech vehicles in the game. The initial Imani tech vehicle that we got into Grand Theft Auto Online with the contract update could take four RPGs and I believe 12 homing missiles. They also had bullet resistant windows and front mounted machine guns as well as a proximity oil slick mine dropper. However, this thing does not have bullet resistant windows but it has the exact same armor as the first generation of Imani Tech vehicles that were added with the contract, but it also doesn't have machine guns, so it's a little bit weird. So for that reason, I had to place this thing uh, pretty low down in the honorable mentions because it's really just not as good as some of the other Imani Tech vehicles. However, it is new, so I did want to make mention of it. It is still a good car, don't get me wrong, but it's just not quite as good as maybe it should be, I feel like. Anyway, guys, that is pretty much it for the Anis 300R. Let's move on to the next one. And for our final honorable mentioned this is of course the mammoth patriot mill spec and this is an original imani tech vehicle that was added with the contract dlc so it does have front mounted machine guns and it does have bullet resistant windows meaning that this thing is just ever so slightly better than the Anis 300R. Now, I'm not necessarily just placing the Patriot Mill spec here. I'm also talking about the Bravado Buffalo STX, the Dubachi Champion, and any other first-generation Imani Tech vehicle that was added with the Contract DLC. So I'm not just talking about the Patriot. All of those cars are very valid too. However, the Patriot does have a slight advantage over some of them because it does have this upgrade that you guys can see on mine, which is called the Slanted Back. Now, this means that you can't get shot from behind with this thing. However, you can shoot out to a point to about right here. If you go any further, you will start shooting back into the slant back. However, if you shoot, you know, like this, uh, you're going to be able to still shoot out of the back of this thing, which is a useful thing to have. Armor wise, this thing can take four RPGs or 12 homing missiles, like I mentioned before. So it is relatively well armored and it does have the Imani tech upgrades, which include the missile lock on jammer, the same as the Anis 300R. Uh, obviously that is a very nice upgrade to have and it is definitely going to help 
with your armor and your overall survivability in Grand Theft Auto Online. Anyway guys, that is it for the Patriot Mill spec and that is it for our honorable mentions. Let's move on to number 10 and get this list started off properly. Alright guys, starting off at number 10 we have the Barrage. This thing goes for $1.6 million with the trade price up to $2.1 million without the trade price. This thing could take 5 RPGs, so it is a pretty strong vehicle in Grand Theft Auto Online. It is quite quick as well, it does have an upgrade to make 2 mounted machine guns on this thing as well, and it can seat 4 players. Overall, pretty useful vehicle, and it has some decent armor to go with. So definitely one to check into if you guys need a new armored vehicle in Grand Theft Auto Online. However, we do have some really good ones coming up here, so stay tuned. Let's move on to number 9. Next up guys, at number 9 we have the TM02 Kanjali and this thing goes for $2.9 million up to $3.9 million. However, it is a little bit more expensive because in order to own this thing you are going to need to own a facility. However, if you already own a facility and you got some extra money lying around, this is a great armored vehicle to pick up. Obviously it is a tank, it can seat 4 players, the main player and the driver, who is me right now, gets access to the main cannon on this vehicle. The secondary passenger gets access to the 50 cal machine gun on the top and the third and fourth passengers get access to those grenade launchers that are mounted on the turret as well. Armor wise this is the best tank in the entire game. It can take 8 RPGs or 8 homing rockets. It shares the exact same amount between RPGs and homing rockets. Usually that number is a little bit different because RPGs tend to do more damage, but homing missiles will do the exact same amount of damage to this thing. So that is pretty interesting. A fun fact for you guys, this thing has the exact same armor as the APC as well. So the APC is interchangeable with the Kanjali on this list. They both can take 8 RPGs or 8 homing missiles. So. Whichever one you guys like better, make sure you pick one up. Either of them are great vehicles, and I would recommend both of them, that's for sure. Alright guys, next up we have the Night Shark coming in at just over $1.2 million. This thing can take about 9 RPGs and 27 homing missiles from an Oppressor Mark II, or of course homing missiles from a homing launcher as well. The Night Shark also has a front mounted machine gun, although it does absolutely terrible damage, so it's really not that great to use. Um, I would recommend not putting the window plating on this thing so that you guys can use an AP pistol or throw sticky bombs out of it, because the front mounted machine guns are not going to be the best thing to rely on to defend yourself or to attack others. The Night Shark is also a lightning fast armored vehicle, probably the fastest armored vehicle in the entire game to be completely honest, and for only 1.2 million this thing is an absolute steal. So make sure you guys pick up a Night Shark if you do not have one already somehow. Next up at number 7 we have the Insurgent Pickup Custom coming in at $1.35 million plus the cost to upgrade it into the Pickup Custom within an MOC or an Avenger. It's going to be about $1.5 to $1.6 million overall to make this thing into the Insurgent Pickup Custom and then upgrades beyond that are going to cost a little more money. However, it is absolutely worth the price. This thing is the exact same armor as the Night Shark. It can take 9 RPGs and 27 homing missiles so it's got really good armor. It's also a lot higher up off the ground, so I feel like your bullet resistance is a little bit better, just because if people are lower down, they're going to have a harder time shooting you out of this thing. If you put the heavy armor on it as well, your gunner will get this shroud around the turret on the top of this thing, which will make them a lot more protected. The insurgent can seat 9 players, and it also has a proximity mine dropper that you can put down behind you so if people are chasing you down you can just drop that and they will run into it and they will probably die or at the very least if they hit one they will get knocked off course for a minute if they manage to survive it the insurgent is pretty fast not quite as fast as the night shark but pretty decent i would say conceit nine players overall a great armored vehicle in grand theft auto online that's it for the insurgent let's move on to the next one next up we have the bravado half track coming in at number six this thing goes for between 1.7 and 2.3 million dollars depending on if you have the trade price or not. The half track has the exact same armor as the night shark and the insurgent both can take 27 homing missiles or 9 RPGs. However, the half track does have something that is completely unique that neither the night shark or the insurgent have and that is completely bulletproof front and rear windows. That's right, this thing if you are sitting inside of it, you are pretty much not going to get killed unless somebody shoots you through the side window. The side window is the the only one that you can break on this vehicle if you go to shoot through the front window you will see that the glass breaks but when i shoot this thing you will see that the bullets are hitting an invisible sort of wall that's right here 
that should actually be hitting the driver of the vehicle. So this thing is completely bulletproof from the front and also from the rear. The rear is going to be pretty hard to even get an angle on anyways, but even if you can, you're not going to be able to shoot through the back of this thing. The only way that you can die in the half track is by getting shot through the side windows or the entire vehicle getting blown up. Now this does come at a cost, the half track is one of the slowest armored vehicles in the entire game, however it is quite capable off road obviously because of the tracks, it's just not going to go anywhere very fast. So keep that in mind, but the half track definitely is a great vehicle. It can seat three players, one of them being on the mounted machine gun in the back, which by the way does an absolute ton of damage, I think it's one of the most damaging machine guns in the entire game. So keep that in mind. That's pretty much it for the half track at number six. Let's move on to number five. All right, at number five, this one's this one's a little bit of a meme, but I promise it is actually quite armored. This is the Rune Zaba, and it goes for between one point eight million dollars all the way up to two and a half million dollars, uh, depending on if you have the trade price or not. Now, the Rune Zaba is a two seater in Grand Theft Auto Online. And it's also an amphibious vehicle. You can take this thing into the water. So it is pretty capable. However, it's extremely slow. And because of its wheels being in such close proximity to each other, the vehicle is quite hard to drive. However, the armor of this vehicle is quite good. It can take 14 RPGs and 14 homing missiles, which is pretty crazy. 14 RPGs is pretty much unheard of in GTA. 14 homing missiles, that's nothing too crazy or too special. In fact, all of the three last vehicles have been able to take more homing missiles than this thing. However, this thing can take five more RPGs than any of the last three vehicles that we've gone over. So that is pretty impressive. Now, I wouldn't honestly recommend picking up the Rune Zaba, but I have to be honest, this thing does have a little bit more armor than most of those vehicles, at least when it comes to RPGs. So there you have it. That's it for the Rune Zaba. Probably don't buy this thing. Next up at number four, we have the Obey Omni EGT that was added back in the summer with the Criminal Enterprises DLC. The Omni EGT goes for $1.8 million, which is actually a pretty fair price for what you get with this thing. This is, of course, the newest generation of Imani Tech capable vehicles, with the exception of the 300R, I guess. This thing is very, very interesting. Now, it sacrifices the bulletproof windows that we talked about earlier that the Patriot Millspec, the Bravado Buffalo STX, and all of those original contract DLC vehicles have in favor of this thing having far better armor. The EGT without the armor upgrade on it can take six RPGs or three homing missiles. However, with the armor upgrade equipped on this thing, it can take 12 RPGs and 12 homing missiles. However, what I can tell you as well is that I have tested this thing myself and I have footage that I will put on the screen right now of this thing taking 20 RPGs to kill, which is absolutely insane. Now, I think that this is to do with it being an electric vehicle. As far as the coating of the vehicle and everything is concerned, this thing doesn't have have an engine, so it is able to take a lot more abuse than people initially thought that it could. It's also an electric vehicle, so it has a very, very fast acceleration response time. It has pretty decent handling and it's pretty quick, and I honestly think that it's a pretty great looking vehicle. So overall, the Obey Omni EGT is definitely one of the best vehicles in Grand Theft Auto Online, and of course, it does have Imani Tech, like I mentioned, so it has a missile lock-on jammer on top of being able to take 12 to 20 RPGs and 12 homing missiles at least. Truly one of the best vehicles for free mode in the entire game. Make sure you guys own an Obey Omni EGT. And at number three, we have the Terabyte. Now the Terabyte has moved down a place. This was previously the second most armored vehicle in the entire game. However, it is now the third. The Terabyte can take 32 homing missiles and it can take about 18 to 22 RPGs depending on where it gets hit. So it is a very, very strong vehicle. However, it is extremely large. Not exactly one that you're probably gonna typically cruise around in. It's also not that fast. I mean, for how big it is, it's pretty quick, don't get me wrong. But but overall, in the grand scheme of things, compared to some of the other vehicles on this list, this thing is very, very slow. And dethroning the Terabyte, we have the Brigade 6x6, or the Acid Lab, that was added with the Los Santos Drug Wars DLC. Now, you can purchase this vehicle for $1.45 million, or of course, you can complete the 6 DAX first dose missions, and you will unlock this thing and be able to purchase it for $750,000 from the Freak Shop. Now, this is how I recommend getting the Acid Lab. 
I got the Acid Lab by doing my first dose missions and then I also got it by purchasing it and then I found out that to upgrade it and to actually use it, I needed to do the first dose missions anyways. So you might as well do them, get paid and save yourself $700,000. That's my recommendation. The Brigade 6x6 can take 48 homing missiles from an oppressor mark ii or from the homing launcher which is absolutely insane and it can take somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 to 28 rpgs depending on where the vehicle gets hit absolutely crazy in addition to this the front bar on this thing is able to push vehicles out of your way so easily you can push literally any vehicle out of your way with the acid lab so fast and you will barely lose any speed with this thing. So it is a crazy vehicle in Grand Theft Auto Online. Definitely one that I recommend. Honestly, it's probably the best vehicle with the most armor in the game. You literally cannot get stopped while you're in the acid lab. This thing is absolutely insane. On top of that, the acid lab is also customizable. You can change how this thing looks. You can change the livery on it. You can change some more options on it. Definitely a pretty cool vehicle to have. Definitely a must have in 2023 for sure. Anyway, guys, that is it for number two. Let's move on to the number one most armored vehicle in Grand Theft Auto Online in 2023. Of course, the number one we're talking about the Mobile Operations Center, and specifically the Mobile Operations Center Cab. The Mobile Operations Center Cab is uh, disconnectable from the actual Mobile Operations Center, or you can drive around with it on as well. However, obviously it's gonna be a little bit quicker to drive around with the Mobile Operations Center disconnected from the MOC Cab. Now the MOC Cab is literally the most armored vehicle in the entire game. It can take 67 homing missiles from an Oppressor Mark II. The Mobile Operations Center Cab can also take about 30 RPGs, maybe 35, depending on where you're getting hit by them. On top of this, you can also use the MOC cab to back people down. And what I mean by this is similar to what we were talking about with the Patriot mil spec, except with this vehicle, you can shoot directly through the back of this thing and you cannot be shot because as you guys can see, there are no windows. So you can just back up into people, back up towards people, use your AP pistol, your mini Uzi, sticky bombs, grenades, whatever you want to use, throw them at them, shoot at them, anything that you want to do and they will not be able to stop you essentially this is a crazy vehicle to have in grand theft auto online definitely one of the best armored vehicles in the entire game i would say that generally the acid lab is a little bit more useful but as far as armor goes, which is what this list is about, the MOC cab is pretty much completely untouchable. Anyway guys, that is it for the top 10 most armored vehicles in Grand Theft Auto Online in 2023. If you guys enjoyed this video, if you learned something, a like is of course appreciated. If not dislike, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new, and I will see you all in the next video. Until then, take care. Peace.